Recording under freezing conditions uh, below the specification of the drone. This is probably something that we all have been wondering. We have all seen the exciting and amazing footage that have been recorded of fresh fallen snow, winter landscape with the sun just shining onto it, casting really nice shadows. And there are basically two main challenges. First of all, the temperature, and that can come in different uh, flavors. You can freeze on your hands and uh, lose your ability to operate the drone. But also, uh, the, the drone might not even be able to take off if you don't make sure that the batteries are kept warm just before you launch the drone. Secondly, there's reflections. Everything, when the sun is shining on these white surfaces, will be very reflective. So we need to dim down the shutter speed of the drone for that not to skyrocket through the roof. And for that purpose, of course, we have our trusted ND fillers. And in this case, it's a kit from Freewell. I have mounted the ND64, a polarizer version here on the drone. And I made sure that the ring here, the front ring, that is uh, positioned vertically on the drone. So I get the maximum polarization effect. The battery you need to keep that warm. So uh, for this experiment, I just kept it here below sort of the recording bracket that I'm using for the GoPro Max. So I'm pretty sure that this is uh, preheated. You don't need to do that, but uh, don't leave the batteries in your car or at night ready to get out flying because then you might run into problem when you want to launch the drone. Freezing your fingers is uh, often a problem when you're out flying your drone winter time. But uh, I often use my car because that's nice and warm and I can sit here inside even though it's pretty freezing outside without having any issues. This is not always possible, of course. You can end up in a situation where you're on a mountain or a hill or somewhere where you can't bring your car. So that's, of course, always not an option. But in many cases, it's uh, very convenient just to sit here in your car and concentrate on uh, the job and, of course, not flying too far away, which you still can spot the drone if you need to. I'm outside the city and let's take the Mini for a spin and see how that goes. Position on the launch pad. And I brought the smart controller and make sure to minimize the time from when you put it on the launch pad until you launch the actual drone. Because once the juices are going to flow from the battery into um, the motors or the ESCs, uh, everything will start to heat up and you would not have problems uh, getting it. Oh. So let's just launch it here. So just underexpose it a bit here. Let's fly over to those mills over here. The temperature is slightly below zero or 32 Fahrenheit, which I think it's equivalent to in the US. And so far, as you can see, there are absolutely no problem. And the landscape is as stunning as I would imagine it would. Let's just fly a little bit further down here. You can put it in sport mode and we're doing it a little bit faster. Ooh. So I got a weak signal. That's probably because I'm in the car. Oh, don't let's. So I'm away somewhere. Oh, that's because I put in uh, some <laughs> aggressive exponential settings the other day. I did that video about these uh, settings where you can slow down the stick response. So if you missed out on the video that I made about the expo or exponential settings of the drone where you can slow down the stick response uh, when you are flying, you can access those uh, under this, these uh, three dots here. You can see you can set your expo settings uh, for the drone. I made a separate video about that and I'll make sure to link that up here somewhere if you're interested in that. And you can see I put in some very aggressive settings here for, for, uh, for sport boats, which was the reason why it was reacting a little bit crazy. So we mounted the ND filter on the drone before we took off. So let's just see how that brings the shutter into play here. So if we stop the video here shortly. You can see here, ISO 400, we don't need that. We need to put the ISO down to 100, like this. That was actually, um, so the, the filter is actually too dark for this scenery. You can see if I put it down to 100, 
you see that the footage will be underexposed with 1.3 stop, which is uh, okay, but it is still uh, maybe a little bit too dark. So let's just try and put it up here, 200. So in, uh, in any other case, I would have flown back and replaced the ND64 to uh, ND32 to make sure that I get closer to zero in exposure. If you want to understand more in depth about ND filters and why and how and when you're going to use those, I made a separate video about that, which I make sure to include somewhere in the description below. Uh, I'm probably getting these weak signals warnings, <laughs> even though it's just in front of the car here. So I'm located down here at this spot behind those uh, machinery. So maybe that is what's causing the interference with the signal to the drone. But it's very beautiful, very beautiful landscape. So, so far so good. We are flying uh, perfectly fine below uh, the specification of the drone. We can uh, do uh, a little point of interest here manually. So let's move to the right and then I compensate with the yaw. See, in that way I can keep the car in the center of the frame here. And just, just keep your hands steady. Don't touch anything. And then you can very easily make a scene like this. So let's get the drone back. Someone asked me if uh, I'm doing the return to home while sitting in the car, if the drone can actually find the car on the way back. So let's make a test of that. So basically the conclusion here is that it's perfectly fine to go outside flying below the specified temperature of the drone as long as your batteries are preheated. You need to compensate for the extra brightness of uh, the sun. Basically bring down your shutter speed by using uh, ND filters because you don't have any other way to reduce the amount of light that hits the sensor. You can deal with at least to some limited <laughs> with the cold. The freezing cold is by staying inside uh, some sort of shelter. In my case, this is the car that will make it uh, more easy for you to just sit very cozy and quietly and deal with uh, whatever obstacles that you are being exposed to. I do want to add a very, very important disclaimer is that you should avoid to fly under very moist and foggy conditions, especially uh, when it's around zero Celsius or close to freezing. You might end up in a situation with icing on your props, popping the motor overload warning out of nowhere, forcing you to land instantly or in extreme cases simply make the drone crash. So be really careful when flying under moist conditions. So let's see what's going on here. I usually stop it just before it hits uh, the roof because I want to make sure that, uh, that everything goes well. And for that purpose, the pause button, that is really your friend because that will stop any uh, operation. And as I can see it, it's not going to hit the car. You see, it will have missed the car if that was the case. So what I do now is I just normally just, ooh. So, safe back on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's pretty uncomplicated. Just as a test, let's grab a few questions from one of the previous videos. And in this case, it's the Expo or Exponential settings of the remote introduced with the DJI Fly App 154. And as many of you have pointed out, it's not called exposure, but exponential or expo settings, which is something that is very familiar to ones of you that have been flying RC aircrafts before you're entering into the DJI arena. With the Expo settings, you will be able to adjust the stick sensitivity around center, making it a lot easier for you to capture smooth footage. Some of you reported quick shots were missing after installing 154, but in most cases, this is because you have forgot to mount an SD card in your, which will mean that quick shots will be missing and you'll be recording in a lower resolution if you're recording directly onto your phone. So just slap in an SD card and everything will be back to normal. How do the Expo settings affect the advanced gimbal settings? These two advanced settings are not linked at all, as the advanced gimbal settings is only related to the movement or the tilting of the camera, where the Expo or exponential settings are related to controlling the drone by itself. So what do you think about me answering your questions directly as part of a video? Let me know in the comment below. 
I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.